In the summer, everyone's moving to the countryside. And today, Geometrium is visiting the photographer Vladimir Glinin at his modern country house. Just as you like it, with a flat roof located on a plot that adjoins directly to the forest in a super cool countryside village by the reservoir. The house is modern, the interior is cool. It was designed by Zura Barabidze. Today's episode is going to be very interesting. Enjoy! Vladimir, hi. Alexei, welcome. Cool house. Welcome, thank you. Cool plot. My beautiful house, which was built and designed by architect Zurab Arabitsi. And I'll be glad to show and tell you all about it. Let's go. Let's go, let's go. This is my dog, Jex. Jex, hi. Oh, there's so much light here. Tell us, please, Vladimir, in general, how many square meters are here? This house is relatively small. It's 270 square meters, two floors. What's on the first floor? First floor, it includes my space, my bedroom, sauna, living room, kitchen, storage rooms. There's in fact a lot of stuff here. And the second floor is entirely for guests. It was essential to give guests the opportunity to have their own private space, not connected to me in any way. And accordingly, I also rarely go up there. Could you tell me what's the ceiling height here? Three meters. And on the second floor, also three meters? Yeah, absolutely. Tell us in general, where did you start? Where did the idea to move to the countryside come from in the first place? Well, my childhood was intertwined with countryside. My family had a summer house and consequently these are my childhood memories. Then of course all of this lost its charm for me. But having turned 30, I decided that I needed to relax in nature. So the idea came up, I implemented everything quite quickly and immediately started looking for a plot. I found it quickly and started building the house quickly. The whole cycle from the moment you bought the plot to the moment when I moved into the house, when you moved into the house... It's two and a half years. Listen, this... This is very fast. You're awesome, really awesome. Guys, in fact, this is a very quick time frame for building a house. Most likely after you bought the plot and started choosing an architect, after that you started designing. Then you started implementing it, and this is a very, very, very short time. Is this house for permanent residents, or do you somehow combine city life with country life? It's built, of course, for permanent residents. But as my main job is in Moscow, my exhibitions, my gallery, so I spend half a week in the city, half a week in the countryside. Sometimes I can stay here for a while. I'm an artist, so I have a flexible schedule. Tell our viewers more about what you do. At the moment, for more than 10 years, I have been an art photographer who only does his own art projects in the field of photography. Before that, there was a long period of glossy advertising photography, and the very beginning, I was a ballet artist of the Bolshoi Theater. So I've had drastic career changes throughout my life, I really like it when homes are made by architects in cooperation with clients, when the client is engaged in creativity. And I think you've achieved a very cool symbiosis. Dear friends, this is Zurab, the project architect. Please tell us, where did the creation of this house begin? In 2013, I exhibited at Art Moscow, where I accidentally met Vladimir. After that, he somehow suggested to participate. He was choosing an architect and I made my commercial offer and waited for a response. I remember before the new year I flew out of Moscow and just as I landed and turned on the phone there was a call from Vladimir that he wanted the house to be designed. What did Vladimir want initially? Initially he wanted something, something, how do I word this, like modern architecture. He understood perfectly well the inside composition of the house. That is what rooms there are, right? Yes, approximately how many square meters and so on. He had a very good understanding of this. We developed specifications. There are some parts that I myself suggested there. Well, for example, what did you suggest yourself? For instance, I suggested there's that room he trains in. That was my suggestion. Kind of space for meditation or something of that sort. And there's also a bathtub in the floor. That was the idea, wasn't it? Very cool. We also have a storage for paintings so that there is the opportunity to change them. Initially, the task was that he wanted some pieces to hang everywhere. I also really like it when you have some different artworks and you have the opportunity to change them, sort of. Well, after two years, after a year, maybe after three months, it's interesting, I think, after all, the environment changes like this. Friends, the house is very airy because it has windows on one side. There are windows on the other side. That is, you see the space, it is illuminated from both sides. 
And what's really cool is that in this house, we move from one room to another, and we have they smoothly flow into one room, another room. And it seems like one common unified whole, thereby expanding the space of this house. Right now we are here, we are filming this during the day. In the evening, the lighting here is very well thought out. It's very soft, very warm, it creates evening coziness. And throughout the year, for example, when the weather changes, when the seasons change, even with very low gray sky here, still there's a lot of light in the house. And this house breathes, there's a sense of space, air. Most often I'm asked, isn't it scary, isn't it cold with such large windows? I definitely say no. Please tell me, what is the house made of? If I'm not mistaken, it's SIP panels. SIP panels, yes. SIP panels. Yes, yes. Who is your sofa manufacturer? Most of the furniture, these chairs, sofa, is from the American company Camerick. The table consoles were designed according to Zurab's sketches. Some items like, for instance, this kitchen table, it was designed based to my sketches, also the chairs. You came up with them yourself? Well, I decided to participate a little bit. What else besides the table? And the chairs, which are on the terrace. These are two chairs made entirely based to my sketches. Please tell me, let's take a little walk around the kitchen. Your bar chairs are cartel, right? That's correct, yes. Cartel. Yes, yes, the kitchen was also designed and made according to Zurab's sketches, and so the island... Please tell me, what material is the countertop made of? Marble. Marble? Yes, it leaves traces, but it didn't scare me at all because I really love natural stone. I really love black marble with these white veins, and I sacrificed maybe practicality, but I really enjoy it. I also cook a lot, actually, and I spend a lot of time in the kitchen. I love to cook, especially in the countryside, when I have time, when I'm not in a hurry, when friends come over. So we spend a lot of time here. How many years have you been living here? Five years, five years. Ah, so you've been living here for five years? Yeah, that's right. Is there anything that you would change now? It's quite amazing, but this is the case when I wouldn't change anything at all. Moreover, after five years, each time I come here, I honestly say, and this is the merit of the architect and probably my merit as a client, that I found the right architect for myself. Architect, yes. I come here to this house, I experience a feeling of delight when I enter it. Here I spend a great time with friends. I also love solitude and I feel very comfortable here alone. I don't feel somehow lonely here and it's great. I have some kind of balance in this house that allows me to enjoy my time here. From a functional point of view, how convenient is it to take out some dishes and where do you put them away? There are glasses there, everything is convenient. And the plates? Plates are at the bottom. So you have such a functional triangle. You open, take out the dishes. Yeah, exactly. You put it here, put something here. Because many people are scared to make a sink on the island because they think it will be inconvenient to put dishes as there is no hanging drawer. Please tell me, what is this countertop made of? This is artificial black stone. And the wall is made... Of the same... Yeah, exactly. Of the same material. In our kitchen in the wet area, we have micro cement. And in principle, this micro cement, it actually is in different rooms. It is in the kitchen, it is on the second floor, in the bathrooms, in second floor, in the bathrooms, in the sauna. So it all kind of unites the common space and makes it a whole. And on top of that, this micro cement goes perfectly together with the facade of the building, which is also in the same color scheme. So, and this is... This is a very interesting room which was proposed during Zurab's designing process. I didn't fully understand the function of this room, but having started living in my house, I appreciated this space. It serves as an office, a cinema, and at the same time there is a place for me to do yoga or stretches sometimes in the morning. Generally, it turned out to be this multifunctional space that is constantly used. I want to show you a small compartment where the sauna is located and, as it is customary to call, a lounge area, a foyer. And just the idea of a sunken bath, in the floor, right? In the floor, it's Bali. It's a spa in Bali, which always amazed me. On top of that also, there is a large window here, and in winter, it's very nice to lie in a warm bath and... Enjoy the snow? Watch the falling snow, yeah. It's a special kind of chic. The space is relatively small, as crowds don't come here. And most often, either I'm alone here or with someone else. So I've got everything that's needed and wanted specifically done for me here. Concrete walls are meant to make it darker. I think it's a very sexy room. I won't argue. Yeah, it is, right, right. Here's the first thought, that is, it's just this spa relax vibe. So the sauna itself is there, right? Yeah, yeah, sure. So, oh, cool, this is an interesting shape. Look, guys, see, there's such a curved line, it cuts into another. And as a result, we have quite an unusual sauna, such an unusual one. Cool idea. As you could see in the previous room, in this room, and also on the terrace, there's this soft furniture. Who's the manufacturer? 
This is No Solid, it's a Portuguese company. And while relaxing in Portugal in one hotel, I was amazed at how comfortable it was. You can only appreciate it when you sit down or lie down. The filler, it fully takes the shape of the body. Should I try? Can I? Of course, absolutely. So it's impossible you don't want to leave it. It's very relaxing and so... You don't want to leave at all. It's unique in that it can be used inside the house. It can be used... It's suitable for a terrace? Yeah, the furniture are waterproof, fading proof, everything proof. So during the season, they're moved to the terrace and from the terrace, it's very convenient, these modules. And they're also there in that room and here as well. So this is the furniture that I've been waiting for a long time and I'm thrilled to use it. Tell me, do you have sliding doors here, right? Yeah, sure. This is also very convenient when I want to. Practically from my bedroom, you can see the whole house straight up to this window to the forest. Sometimes I close it when I want to be in a small space. Was there any idea what inspired you when you were designing this house? It mostly comes from the person who places the order. There's this principle, if I combine architectural vision, the projects always turn out to be interesting. From what we've talked about, I understood that you, you know, work as an architect in the same way actors work by the Stanislavski method. That is, you get into the role, as it turns out, of the client and translate your architectural experience into functionality that would be useful for them. Yes, I like to act as if I'm designing for myself. Yeah, there is this thing. Yeah, exactly. It fascinates me. How often did you come to the construction site, to the object? Not very often. I probably came about 20 times. And that's it? Yeah, that's it. So about once a month, right? Yes, well, if you make drawings, generally everything is in it. They read the drawings with no questions asked. It's all clear. I'm talking to you and starting to get the idea. In terms of thinking, the idea of creating a house, architectural space, that is, to make some ordered space out of chaos so that there is some function in it. Yes, function. Well, the nature of chaos, it's not clear at all why this tree grew here and another there. Listen, tell me, you're always saying pros, pros, pros. And what were the difficulties? Probably there were no difficulties. There were some issues during the construction that required solutions. But I had an absolutely great builder and Zurab as an architect led the construction and many questions were quickly solved. As for serious ones, no, there weren't any. I can't remember, honestly. Tell me about decorative elements. Here is an amazing black painting. Whose work is this? This black painting, it is a painting by Zureb. And honestly, when I saw it, I just fell in love right away and understood that it perfectly fits into this space. It reflects actually my personal preferences in art. I have two favorite artists, Kazimir Malevich and Mark Rothko. But this work reminded me a lot, not just reminded me of the black square. It's absolutely such a modern version, rethought by the artist of black space, black form. And then this size texture, I really fell in love with it right away. In regards to the lighting in the house, there is a lot of so-called hidden technical light. I like semi-darkness in the evening, I like to adjust. As a photographer, I know that for any living space, light is one of the main parts. So the light here is extremely well thought out. Narrow lighting above the table on a dimmer so that when we all sit, we don't have overexposed scary faces. So here is the same spot lighting which goes exactly to the width of the island, again, so that the light does not go straight into the eyes. The lighting is very chamber and it is very comfortable to be here. There is also a lot of technical light in the ceiling, but it is turned on very rarely. Here, probably the only accent of this kind in the living room, these are Catalani and Smith lamps that, I think this is amazing Italian company that makes lighting as art. And we can't appreciate it now, only in the evening. Maybe it gives out the feeling, not the feeling, but the pattern of splashes on the walls because of these torn edges. There is this lighting system that through reflections hits the wall already in the form of a light pattern. Speaking of the bedroom, here the amount of square meters was crucial for me. I don't like huge bedrooms and of course I don't like very small bedrooms. And the bedroom for me, of course, should be that soft space where I enjoy both going to sleep and waking up. Here, just as an exception, there are two of my works hanging opposite one another. Moreover, this work is unique. It's not editioned, it's not from any project. It was born during my trip to Lake Baikal. This is just a wonderful memory of a beautiful trip, a bay where I was rather, we were with friends alone, there was no one else there. 
and this feeling that you can swim in the water and drink it, stunningly beautiful nature. This photograph, it reminds me of a moment in life when I was amazed by this world. Therefore, it is important to me. And above the bed hangs a work, one of my favorites in my abstract series of photography. And it's so neutral and at the same time fits well here. Honestly, I have to say that... It plays well with the banquette that... Yeah, very much so. ...is located beside the bed. So it kind of blends well. But I rarely look at it. You know, sometimes we see something out of the corner of our eye and it's great. I was annoyed here, strangely enough, by the empty space, so it fit in perfectly here. And I spend here. Here's a very beautiful vintage chair that I buy from my art dealer who deals in vintage real furniture. Here I can often sit and read in the evening. A relatively small bathroom. I always love myself a spacious shower. There's no bathtub because the one near the sauna is quite enough for me. Well, that's all that. We also love Durovit, German plumbing. Grower, right? Yeah. Grower mixers are installed. Yes. So all this is five years old? Yes, everything here is constantly used. Is constantly used? Everything is very minimalist too, but extremely convenient and functional. The mirror doesn't go all the way. That is, it's made on purpose so that splashes don't stain it. But it goes to the ceiling? And to the ceiling to expand the space. Yes. Everything is done very precisely on axis. This is one of the rules that we also use in our interiors. That is, to design on axis what is opposite the door, for example, is exactly centered for us. The same lamp goes exactly in the center. These techniques make the interior beautiful. Very cool. Damn, Zurab did a very awesome job of playing with space. First of all, you don't see what's happening on the neighboring plot. Here, actually, there's a very good mix of the house's location on the plot, how the windows are located, and good interior design, functional one. Because sometimes architects design houses but forget about the interior. That is, here Zurab combined his skills and knowledge in architecture with skills and knowledge of the interior space. Here we go up to the second guest floor where, as I said, I go up to very rarely. The armchair immediately grabs attention. This is a vintage armchair, a real one. But this one is, as I said, a whole guest floor. Initially, it was planned that this would be some kind of my office. In the end, I made it on the first floor, so this remained as this small living room for guests. And I always wondered, asked if anyone used it, they say, yes, of course. Here comes Jex, who always follows me everywhere. He is comfortable everywhere. Here are two small bedrooms, nothing superfluous. And here, by the way, is a very interesting system in terms of curtains. Curtains are not there. And since we have a minimalist interior, roller blinds are made here. But nevertheless, it doesn't seem that the interior is empty. By the way, it's convenient that you can sit on the windowsills. And guys, look, floor radiators, despite the fact that we have space to hang radiators on the walls so that nothing distracts from the view from the window. That is, from nature, radiators are also built into the floor. Very cool idea to design all guest rooms on the second floor. Your own guest room, there are two bedrooms. What's the catch? The thing is that if you live on the first floor, you don't need to run up and down the stairs every day. Well, and if guests come, they can both climb and descend. On top of that, they have their own private space and you don't bother each other. Listen, you've got a whole football field here. Yes, here is a very large terrace. Solarium. To be honest, I don't use it very often, and I'm completely satisfied with the terrace on the first floor. But sometimes it's very nice to be here. Guys, well, I hope you all enjoyed the house tour. Vladimir, if someone asks, ask some questions in the comments to the video. Will you be able to answer some of them? Of course, I'll be happy to, anytime. Guys, subscribe to the channel, like the video, leave comments, ask your questions. If you haven't watched it yet, I very much recommend you watch the video that we did in the house of the architect who designed it 10 years ago. And it seems as modern as the houses they make now. Bye.